வணக்கம் சென்னை வெல்கம் ஆன் என்டி டிவி நெட்ஒர்க் யூ ஆர் வாட்சிங் பேட்டல் கிரவுண்ட் தமிழ்நாடு நைன்டீன்த் அப்ரல் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஃபேஸ் ஆஃப் போலிங் தமிழ்நாடு ஆல் சீட்ஸ் தே ஆர் கோயிங் ஃபார் போல்ஸ் அண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் த மோஸ்ட் வாஸ்ட் ஸ்டேட் பிகாஸ் மிஸ்டர் நரேந்திர மோடி ஹேஸ் புட் ஹிஸ் இன்டையர் பர்சனல் கிரெடிபிலிட்டி அண்ட் இக்விட்டி ஆன் திஸ் ஸ்டேட் மோர் தென் எனி அதர் ஸ்டேட் a state where uh, bjp is not expecting many seats but a serious significant jump in vote share it is just not an election for him i think it is a civilizational project that he is working on we have a grand panel here in tamil nadu uh, politics uh, to talk about uh, different aspect of the election i am introducing you uh, from my left mr sandeep shastri lokniti a great data analyst manisha priyam ji social scientist data scientist amitabh tiwari manu sundaram from uh, dmk apsara reddy spokesperson from aia dmk and last but not the least bjp state vice president mr narayanan tirumurthy thank you so much for your uh, time here i will start to set the tone of this conversation uh, with mr sandeep shastri why are you watching tamil nadu uh, sanjay ji i am watching tel- uh, tamil nadu for multiple reasons this was a state which largely had a two alliance competition from 1977 onwards from 70% to 96% of votes was between these two parties and uh, between these two alliances and this time around the bjp is leading a i will not say third force is leading another force and this changes in certain ways the dynamics of the politics of the state that against two parties which were seen as dravida parties leading to alliances you have uh, the bjp now coming in leading the third alliance and hoping to position itself at the end of this election as a key challenger to the dmk and the last point i would uh, make on this is prime minister was very clear that uh, when asked whether 2029 election is important he said no i am looking at 2047 and i think he said that keeping tamil nadu in mind because the long term goal is very much there for them here right manisha ji what is the core factor you are looking at in tamil nadu uh, so i do think that there are very important changes in india's national politics in this election round uh, if we look at the last election in 2019 almost all of us believed and perhaps truly so that there was a national wave around the pulwama this time around you see that state politics and the color of state politics matters a lot and you see even a prime minister leading a state politics with state level ambitions so this leaves a lot of us largely those of us living in the northern parts of india as to what the ambitions of the bjp are in this land which has been the center of dravidian politics historically as soon as the indian national congress set up the home rulers any basant and the rdr the women's politics soon after that there was an anti brahman movement the justice justice party uh, which was uh, formed here the newspaper justice led an agitation that later on led to the foundations of the non brahman movement and the syncretizing of the dravidian politics around it so what is it now where are the fault lines with which a national party such as the bjp believes that it finds a ground in tamil nadu and that's what i would like to look at with a lot of surprise but also with a lot of awe remember the politics of the national parties up until now has been very different from how it's been played out in the state of tamil nadu right amitabh congress party ceased to be a core player in this state decades ago now a national party is making a serious move so looking at their ambition and the ground reality uh, where is the gap or where do you think he has an opportunity I think the prime minister modi sees some current amongst the voters which we are not able to see if you recall 2019 the top 3 rallies of the prime minister were in up west bengal and odisha because he saw that there could be a likely decline of seats from the north this time as well he sees that there could be a decline of seats from north and western regions and there is a potential to increase seats or increase vote share in tamil nadu in a post jalalita post karunanidhi era because they have been towering personalities but it's a daunting task the advantage which bjp enjoys in other parts of the country the dmk enjoys here 
because it has more than 50% vote share. Whereas the BJP-led alliance along with PMK has just around 10% vote share and the AIADMK 20% vote share, which means that without making a significant dent in the vote share of DMK, it is not really possible to win a significant amount of seats. However, it's a vote share play and the Prime Minister hopes that banking on his popularity and his charisma and the scope for an opposition or a third force, he could be able to draw significant amount of votes here and sheets. Uh, Manu, do you really uh, uh, think that the whole conversation now begins with, uh, with Mr. Modi and the reason behind it, there is a fatigue about Dravidian politics? Um, Chennai is very hospitable and uh, let, let me on behalf of my fellow spokespersons welcome you all having come from Karnataka and Maharashtra before that. But that does not mean that Chennai will accommodate just about anyone and everyone when it comes to determining our political future. These elections, that is the 2024 general elections, are as much about the future of Indian democracy as much as it is about my constituency, my state and so on. Of course, the Prime Minister, having been our Prime Minister for 10 years, does enjoy a great deal of attention, you know, when it comes to whether it is conversation amongst people like us, you know, in the, in the, amongst the common people, as we say, or in media spaces. But that in itself, according to me, my first point would be, is that, is there a Narendra Modi fatigue? My second point is that it seems that, at least now, that uh, the Bharati Janta Party has realized that they have to give importance to states. India, as we know, is a union of states. And for a while there, and for a while I mean from 2014 to 2023, it seemed like they had almost forgotten and there was too many centralized sort of tendencies within the way government functioned. So we are happy that the Prime Minister has come quite often to Tamil Nadu. We are happy that he often says that he wants to learn Tamil and he wants to understand Tamil culture. I think that in itself shows that the BJP has lacked someone who can explain what Tamil Nadu stood for. As some of the, my fellow panelists, the experts have mentioned, this has been a state that has been dominated by a type of politics. You know, you may call it Dravidian politics, you may call it autonomy, state autonomy, you may call it federalist politics, you may call it social democratic politics, whatever it is. Yes, it is a unique brand of politics. There is a strong sense of identity to the people here, the language, the culture. And this is not Manuraj saying this. This is the Prime Minister who has realized Manu, uh, this. You, you, your parties are actually selling this uh, narrative uh, from a space of grievance. Uh, that narrative, which is basically anti-center rhetoric, has actually now become rhetoric. You have nothing else to sell. Actually, it is not anti-center and it is not from a position of grievance. I, I beg to uh, disagree there. We, like I said, we have a very strong sense of identity. It is from a sense of a place of pride in knowing what we are, who we are. Our movement, almost a hundred year old movement, talks not about hatred, it talks about self-respect. It says that I have to respect myself as much as I respect any other person in front of me. From, it is from that point that we oppose the caste hierarchy. It is from that point we oppose discrimination amongst people. So that is my primary point. It is the sense of identity that has defined our politics. And it has become very suspicious of what Delhi, or if I may say, uh, in a cheeky way, what Nagpur has started doing to this country. You know, that, yes, there is a tendency now to distrust Delhi. There is a tendency to question what are the diktats coming from Nagpur. Mm -hmm. But we are not against uh, anyone. We are saying that ensure that states, that's not only Tamil Nadu, right. make sure every state is respected right. and treated Some, equally. Yeah. Somewhere, Apsara, uh, Tamil Nadu parties are uh, underappreciating what Mr. Modi is telling an individual Tamil or a Tamil family that Tamil is an antiquity. It is an old civilization. Tamil is the oldest language, oldest, older than Sanskrit. He is telling you that your civilization 
started from democratic norms mother of democracy is tamil nadu and then he uses strong symbols like sengol bringing xi jinping to tamil nadu he is directly talking to the tamil families and you are not realizing this power see i would like to let you like i would like to tell you that i think prime minister modi is the prime minister of the country so he should look at every state with equality and inclusivity i think it's great that he gives the importance to tamil nadu the way he does but i think it's all very seasonal i don't think um it's something which he really means or it's from the heart i think it's very seasonal i think the sengol also is has been propped up at the opportune time similarly during when elections are announced mr modi comes more often to tamil nadu and just by by hearting a few lines of the tirukkural or using a teleprompter you don't become a tamil i think tamil is a, a larger sentiment than just reciting a few lines i think the people of tamil nadu go by parties which you know reduce prices petrol diesel um you know uh, subsidies on cylinders i think daily economic upliftment is what people of tamil nadu vote for and if you go by the aidmk track record when we were in power the central state synergy was something which mr adapadi actually paid attention to in terms of budget allocation land allocation and also in terms of um sensible policy that benefited the tamils and i think he found that perfect balance post that i think your next question be why not the bjp we broke away from the bjp because they were not somebody who could sustain the development for tamil nadu i think for us while we were in power we were able to kind of uh, maneuver the partnership better and i think now um mr prime minister coming to tamil nadu won't translate to a larger vote share or larger seats okay uh, mr narayanan you heard their critique uh, the headline is that uh, the uh, risk to democracy and the approach towards tamil nadu is via some symbolic gestures and tamilians are not impressed <laughs> then uh, first of all uh, mr manu and mr stalin should have said that uh, they don't want rahul gandhi he is also from delhi or italy see we are indians very simple i am a tamilan manu cannot say that narayanan is a delhiite or a north indian i am a tamilan i am a proud tamilan they don't have any patent rights either dmk or aidmk they don't have patent rights in fact i can talk very very fluently in a very neat and beautiful tamil with the grammar so these people who have been saying that they are for tamils actually manu was saying that you know uh, the, the the their movement was for so many things it is for it's it's a divisive politics they have been doing divisive politics right from the day one right from the justice party they said the british should not go back they have to remain in uh, tamil nadu so they have been doing that and we all know that so as far as we are concerned all are one india is one india divided its states for its administrative purposes that is what dr ambedkar had said you can't deny that and now you say that india is made of states no india made states that is the fact that is the constitution we need to understand this these people should learn this they don't even if they know they will pretend as if they don't know we are here to correct that because i am also a tamilan manu is also a tamilan i have to correct it. so we will do that and in the last 3 4 years our organizations as rightly pointed out by uh, mr shastri yes from 67 there was a change and from 77 these two political parties the dmk and the aidmk was sharing almost 60 to 70% of the votes that is right i don't deny it but so many people like communist congress and the alliance parties of dmk everybody says that we will not have uh, we will not let bjp have a foothold in uh, tamil nadu as if they have a foothold in tamil nadu no they were taking the communists were taking two seats communists were taking two seats for paying getting 15 crores from dmk that is what uh, communists have been the congress is begging for seats with dmk we don't do that we don't do that so this is the issue we yes we had an alliance with aidmk but we parted due to so many reasons the prime minister made it very clearly that the break away of uh, the break up of alliance between aidmk and bjp will not have a problem for bjp it is for the aidmk and i am telling you on june 4th you will see that the admk will feel very sad for coming out of bjp salians and the alliance apsara you should respond see i really feel that the prime minister coming to tamil nadu is not the issue and who is a bigger tamil is not the issue the issue is when the state leader 
the Tamil Nadu BJP state leader, makes the most irresponsible, most uh, uh, lowest of political discourse, attacking our leaders like Madam Jayalalitha or Mr. Anna Durai. Or he even says the AIDMK will cease to exist. He is somebody who has not even won a single councillor election. Madam Jayalalitha has been a six-time chief minister. AIDMK has been in power for 30 years in the state. So when you are in an alliance with a party like the AIDMK, you have to go by alliance dharma. We can also make irresponsible statements. But when you are a part of a party with such a large cadre base and you expect it to translate on the ground, how will the cadres work together? Number one. Number two, I think prime minister coming here is not the issue in who is a bigger Tamil, as Mr. Narayan said. Everybody has a right to celebrate you know, their, their ethnicity and their, uh, the, the, the state that they live in. But I don't think the state leader understands that. I don't think the state leader understands that he's, he's actually not put any runs on the political runs on the table to wish away parties and leaders. Yeah. See, first of all, uh, I, I would like to clarify, yeah. Apsara, mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it is definitely, you know, uh, she will say like that and I have been saying like this. The uh, lowest remarks made by uh, some of the AADMK former ministers, obviously, any person, a young, dynamic and an aggressive person like Mr. Annamalai is bound to reshoot. That he did, there is nothing wrong. And I, I am again saying that these people think that no other party except DMK and AADMK will survive in Tamil Nadu. No, it is not so. We have our, now the flags of BJP is there in each and nook and corner of Tamil Nadu. We have so, grown. Yeah. So I just uh, want to just yeah, add one, one, sec, one, one sec, last point. Let, let's try to just, cover some more. Just one, clarity, one point of rebuttal. Chronologically, the attack was started from the BJP. Sandeep ji, uh, a time comes where there is a turning point in uh, politics of a country or a state. Of course, BJP is hoping that that turning point is here and now in 24 Lok Sabha election, which benefit they will maybe reaping in assembly election. What do you think? Where is AIA DMK, now three factions, they are standing. Will they be the um, biggest loser in this election, followed by DMK vote? Whatever vote share, BJP ga gathers. What is BJP's strategy vis-a-vis -vis these two parties? Sanjay ji, two points on that. Uh, it was a very interesting debate we just now had. From my understanding, the alliance between the BJP and Anna DMK broke simply because the BJP saw an opportunity for a larger stake in the politics of the state and not be the junior partner but be the senior partner of another alliance. So that's, and for a simple reason that when you become the senior partner of the alliance, you dictate the narrative which you would like to lead. And when you are the junior partner in an alliance, you follow the narrative which the senior partner provides. Turning point is something which we all are very interestingly watching. Will the 2024 elections be the start of that turning point? I don't think it will be the turning point. Will it be the start of the turning point where you have redefining of the electoral competition in the state, which was traditionally between two groups led by two Dravidian parties? Are we likely to see the third entrant making a splash? And in the process, possibly, if that splash actually happens, pushing back one of the two, and given the DMK being in power, the one of the two would automatically then be the other DMK. Right. What has changed? Uh, BJP earlier used to talk in the language of Hindi, Hindutva, nationalism. This time, Mr. Modi and Mr. Shah led BJP is focusing on new Tamilian aspiration and having a civilizational context. In between, there is a very interesting caste play in this state. Would you like to uh, throw some light on that? See, uh, I think that banter was particularly impressive because one of the things that was unspoken was that yes, I understand and you know I dig deep into the history of the Justice Party and the self-respect movement and all of this here, how it spreads to Mysore. In fact, I have the figures of how much the Brahmins captured all the civil services and how the, you know, I, I, that's all history. But the point is that at the peak, when the polity was divided between the two uh, Dravidian parties from the 70s up until the 1990s, you required the self-respect movement, the legacy of the justice, but also a filmy tarka. Both these parties are led by stellar, iconic uh, film heroes who were speaking this language. And you built a regional identity 
and you cannot be purist and say that that identity was purely just the justice party i mean not all those movies started with an ode to uh, ev ramaswamy honorable ev ramaswamy naikar they were film heroes of course i have i know the genre of the films etc we can that's not the time but the time is now for us to tell us that it was self respect it was justice it was non brahmin but it had a strong filmy tadka and the decline and the unfortunate demise of madam jailalita has left a vacancy that i don't see the aia dmk simply being able to pull along by drumming ideology where did the bjp see the opportunities now it sees the opportunity also in a vacancy of leadership now why am i to not understand that efforts like the tamil samagam now i wasn't here and i'm sure there's a lot of identity self respect we are the tamil nadu but i was seeing the uh, and this was last year december i was seeing the visitors in varanasi and i was seeing the people from the rss who would uh, you know lead the efforts at the grassroots level now all of them almost all of the uh, people i met from the rss uh, happened to be tamilians yeah so you yeah. cannot deny that they were not hmm. and the hordes the redoing of the kashi vishwanath i in fact up until 2 weeks ago on 31st of march i was at the bhu and then when i went to see the kashi vishwanath the streets are filled by people from tamil nadu i cannot do a caste census there and do a dipstick indicator hmm. and check whether you are this ideology or that but i feel the bjp's push towards a revival towards a revival of what connects kashi with uh, kanya kumari tamil nadu <laughs> is very very important not hmm. many will know that the chaltries here for years sustained the kashi vishwanath temple when it was under duress so i think those unsaid uh, you know pillars of identity are what the bjp is now pushing forward with yeah. and that's so, the challenge you have yeah. just to yeah, you want to address to... that and also the turning point question very briefly uh and and let me preface the by stating the obvious that tamil nadu is sort of a, a home of temples i mean temple tourism is is rampant in tamil nadu and be it kasi be it you know rameshwaram madurai tanjavur tiruvannamalai palani there is you know there is plenty of religiosity that is inherent to the people of the state um, but but that's not the point i think the point about the turning point that i want to make is that it goes back 50 years in in the late 60s was the turning point you had back then a congress dominated union and congress dominated every single state it was a monopoly of governance and by breaking the monopoly first the dmk then the admk which was you know off from the dmk they started a different form of governance now let us now now that we've played this over 50 years let's see the results right the export preparedness this is not manu's numbers this is the niti ayog's numbers they've said tamil nadu has the best export preparedness we have and we have 43% female participation across the country 100 out of 100 women working in manufacturing in the country 43 are from tamil nadu this is not again manu this is the ministry of industry and commerce saying that and i'm not saying it's just the dmk i'm 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 equally i'm fair to say that this is the dmk and the admk but what i'm trying to say is that this has not happened because we have had a double engine sarkar this has not happened because you know we have followed some model uh, you know which is the gujarat model i mean in fact this election is as much about how much the bjp has abandoned the gujarat model <coughs> discourse this this election is about understanding that states like tamil nadu and i'm not saying we have a monopoly on development social or economic or otherwise there are many states that are doing well kerala maharashtra gujarat himachal so on but it is it is a moment to understand that states when left to themselves when given the right fiscal federal policies can shine can outshine the rest of the country they can be leaders they can be role models so my question back to everyone here and the people watching is why do we need a party or a government which is underperformed what we have done as a state the what we call what we proudly now call the dravidian model and again we are not saying that it's only my my chief minister or my party leaders the admk was as much okay. part of this hmm. movement so we have outshined the rest of the country maternal mortality sir, infant mortality four point libraries one, one second, so on and so yeah. forth uh, mr narayanan yeah the dravidian model of development is better <laughs> than gujarat model is the no, point no, 
No, sir. Coastal states will have definitely their manufacturing. See, it's very simple. Throughout the world, see, Tamil Nadu is a coastal state, Gujarat is a coastal state, Maharashtra is a coastal state. Wherever ports are there, the development is going to happen. That is what the Dutch did, that is what the British did. So, if you cannot say that it is only because of DMK and AADMK, the state has grown. See, now we have to understand the entire country is growing. Uttar Pradesh is growing like anything. Now, Tamil Nadu, the Chief Minister proudly says we are in the third position or fourth position. No, you have gone from second to fourth. This is what is happening. Gujarat is becoming more because Mr. Modi, who was there for more than 15 years, he has developed it. Yes, we have competition. Now, the Chief Minister says that.